Hello and welcome to the Latvian alphabet. My foreign friends and acquaintances often ask me, so what's Latvian like? Is it like Russian? Does it relate to any other language in the world? Once I explain it to them, people often want to learn some Latvian. And but when they start learning, they realize that it's a very difficult language. In fact, it's one of the most difficult in the world. And it all starts with the alphabet. So today we're going to go through the 32 letters of the Latvian alphabet with examples and hopefully you'll learn while having fun. Let's go! So here we go. First up, we have a, like in my name, Anete, and also in the word apathy, which means apathy, which is a state of mind us Latvians slip into quite often when we realize that the leaders, the political leaders, that we just elected are exactly the same as the ones we tried to get rid of. Then we have a, found in words like oasis or amorgalva, both of which can be used as insults to designate a lack of intelligence. Oasis means buck or billy goat, whom us Latvians do not esteem to be a very smart animal. And amurgalva is a salic tennis or a compound word, which means that it's made up of the roots of two or three other words. In this case, we have amurs, which means hammer, and galva, which means head. Amurgalva, or hammerhead, means that somebody's head is so thick that not a lot of enlightened thoughts can seep through. Up next, B, found in words like branks, which you can translate in two ways. First way, branks as in well-fed, usually referring to an animal, or a strong and very healthy looking human. For example, wow, what a branks horse you've got there, or Wow, you've got some Brangas arms! The second way to interpret Brangs is something that is big, valuable and great. Latvians are very enthusiastic about agriculture. So for example, we might say, wow, you've grown some very Brangs crops this year. Or maybe I picked some very Brangas mushrooms in the forest today. Or even, how's your beer? Oh, Brangs Halinch which means great beer, which is true, by the way, in Latvia. Moving on to C or T, found in words like cietums or prison. If you study Latvian history, you will come across cietums quite often. If you would like to know what it feels like to go to a Soviet Latvian cietums, you can do so in the beautiful coastal city of Liepāja, where the Karuesta cietums has been turned into a tourist attraction, because capitalist Latvians know how to profit from past misery. Then we have CHE, which is a soft version of CE. CHE is found in words like CHAU or HI or CHIEKURS, which means a pine cone. Or also in CHEBUREX, which is a Tartarian or Transcaucasian food that you can find in the Riga Central Market. It is a deep fried pie type thing, usually filled with minced meat from lamb or pork and onions and it is very delicious, you should definitely try it on your next visit. Then we have DE, found in words like dagvins, which is another salic tennis, this time made from the word DAG, which means to burn, it is a verb, it, it means burn, and VINS, which means wine. Dagwins can therefore be translated as burn wine or fire wine. We are talking, of course, about vodka and in fact, one of the most famous brands of Dagwins in the world, Stolichnaya, comes from Latvia, so you're welcome. Next, the letter E, found in words like eglite or Christmas tree. Did you know that the first Christmas eglite in the world was placed in Riga in 1510? Today, when visiting Riga, you can go and stand on the exact spot where this first Christmas eglita is said to have been placed. Also, Riga has an episks or epic Christmas market, so if you're planning your visit in winter, November, December would be a great time to go, because then you can est, which means to eat. After e, we have its long brother e, which is found in words like est, to eat, or ediens, food. Ediens in Latvia is very diverse and it may surprise you. Some dishes are borrowed from other cultures, but those mixed with real Latvian Adians are sure to satisfy you no matter who you are. A can also have a different pronunciation, which is a, found in words like arms. So arms is what you call somebody who looks strange or unusual. Usually not a compliment, so if somebody calls you an arms, it probably means that you're not doing a very good job in blending in with the locals. Then comes F. F is found in words like feints, which means nice or cool. That one is a compliment. So if somebody calls you a feints gentleman or a feign a lady, you can be sure that they like you. F is also found in the word frikadele or meatball, an important element in Latvian cuisine. Frikadele soup, my favorite, is something that you should definitely try when you visit Latvia. And then, if you like it, you can tell the chef, hey, you've made some famous frikadeles. 
Then we have ga, found in words like graust, which means a slum. So we have quite a lot of those in Latvia, because houses that were built in the late 19th, early 20th century, for the most part, have not been repaired ever since. So we cannot really decide what to do with these graust, because from the one side we want to knock them down, but from the other we want to save our cultural, architectural heritage that we do not have the money to fix. So, since we cannot decide, we like to wait and let accidents such as fires decide the fate of these buildings. Up next, ge, the soft brother of ga, found in words like djarbonis, which means coat of arms. Here is the Latvian djarbonis. With 68 votes out of 98 people present, this djarbonis was inaugurated on the 15th of June 1921. The djarbonis does not comply to the European law of heraldry, because its form is not a shield. And the explanation as to why, as presented on the Latvian national website, is that after 700 years of slavery, Latvians did not feel like following the traditions of their historic oppressors. 